As you know, Andrew, so much of the understanding of economics is on the x-axis. You at PIMCO talk in your wonderful new essay about the long climb. Do we grossly underestimate the length of the x-axis to come? So we think it's going to be long. Um, uh, we think that um, uh, the end of next year uh, or, or early in uh, 2022 is when we may get back to the the levels of GDP that we were at at the start of um, this year. So it was a, a short recession, a massive short recession, but a very long climb to recovery. The other thing we uh, are concerned about is call it um, uh, economic um, uh, scarring. Um, um, there's going to be impacts in terms of labor markets, in terms of um, whole sectors of the economy, where it may be, um, uh, you know, a very long and difficult um, recovery. This, you know, this goes back to the fiscal question. Part of the reason to uh, try and do more fiscal stimulus is to avoid um, a big rise or right. a big sustained period of unemployment. People lose skills. Uh, harder to get back to work. The same in the corporate sector. I mean, the, clearly the hospitality type sectors, transport um, face um, very difficult um, challenges. Well, so our baseline would be it's a long climb to recovery. Um, there's upside risks um, related to uh, breakthroughs on COVID um, fiscal policy, but also downside risks related to this economic um, scarring. Andrew, then to take it back to a PIMCO phrase of the old, the new normal, with the new new normal, do we have an understanding of where potential global GDP is? I mean, do you ratchet it down or can there be a Pacific Rim optimism that China and the rest will drag us forward to a better outcome than what the new new normal would describe? I think so. I think for the next couple of years, um, uh, we're still in this new normal environment, new normal 2.0. Um, and I think in terms of um, growth rates, in terms of um, central bank policy rates, in terms of expectations for, for interest rates, you know, you have to move all of this down. The markets have, have um, done that. So I think the next couple of years, we're in this post-COVID recovery, new normal environment. Where it gets interesting, uh, and it's hard to invest um, based on quite such a long-term view, but where it gets interesting is uh, a few years forward, if you get to the point where there is better news on the macro front, um, there is some uh, semblance of upside inflation risk, and then what happens then in terms of fiscal policy? How, do you, how does it interact then? At the moment, it's pretty easy. You have fiscal dominance, but the, the central banks are fine with that, probably. Uh, the interests are all aligned. Everyone wants the same thing, filling in the big hole we've got, where it would get interesting uh, in terms of um, you know, market volatility, more difficult challenges for central banks would be if a couple of years forward, you have the fiscal policy aimed at you know, getting over the, yeah. the long-term effects of the scarring at, at the time when you do actually have some upside inflation, um, ups, upside inflation risk. We never got to this point in Japan uh, where there was a real conflict, but we, we may get to that, you know, particularly in the English, in the US, other English-speaking countries.